This week, two Rudy Giuliani associates who helped him on Ukraine were charged with campaign finance violations. Prosecutors said that Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman uh, were part of a conspiracy to funeral, funeral foreign money into the U.S. elections. Uh, my colleague Tatiana Kozareva had been following the stories in the name of Fruman and Parnas were uh, exposed uh, this year for BuzzFeed and now she's in studio. So uh, great to have you here. Here. So uh, this is the story of the week on top of the scandal with Giuliani and Trump, but you've been on this story for a while. You've done uh, with the colleagues the long investigation and particularly uh, on uh, Fruman and Parnas talk to them. Um, so um, now there is a lot of press uh, in the US, but still from your finding, what is the most important to know about those two people? Uh, we published the story in the end of July and that was like the story was published three days before the call that Trump made uh, and he talked with Zelensky. So, um, and I think our story mentioned in the uh, whistleblower complaint. And the story was about um, two Ukrainian, basically two American uh, businessmen who had roots with Ukraine, right? One of them were born in uh, uh, Belarus. Like they both were born in former Soviet Union. Uh, but one of them was born in Odessa, uh, the other one in Belarus. Um, and um, the most uh, critical and important thing to follow in the story is uh, to, like we basically exposed that uh, those two guys were traveling back and forth from US to Ukraine and they were managing uh, communication between Giuliani and uh, three Ukrainian prosecutors. Shokin, uh, Holodnitsky, and Lutsenko. So that's probably, uh, uh, we need to explain that Shokin was that exactly prosecutor who had been fired after Joe, um, fired during the time of Joe Biden. Uh, but in Ukraine, he's considered to be the very corrupt prosecutor. Uh, Nazar Holodnitsky is the prosecutor, special prosecutor, um, for, for uh, anti-corruption, and Igor Lutsenko is the previous prosecutor close to former president Yuri Poroshenko. Lutsenko. Yuri Lutsenko, yes. And um, three of them were helping, basically, to, to collect dirt on Giuliani, right? Uh, for three, three of them were uh, basically helping um, Fruman and Parnas to collect dirt on Biden and pass it to Giuliani, basically, right? So um, instead, their only interest was exposed, right? Um, they were making a deal, they were trying to make a deal, uh, which basically uh, saying that US will um, sell a liquefied gas to Ukraine. And they, uh, they had found the company in US and they had a basically communication with the head of Naftogaz, the state company, who was supposed to uh, buy this gas, liquefied gas from US through their company. So they had like their commercial interest, right? Instead, they were basically um, collecting dirt on Biden and was involved basically in communication with uh, Giuliani, who was intensively um, pushing the story about Ukraine, uh, influence uh, on presidential campaign into 2016. So the thing is that Trump now is denying any uh, contacts with them. They, he said like yesterday that uh, I don't know who are those guys. But in real life, and um, the other thing is that Parnas was telling us that uh, Giuliani is basically some kind of a, a godfather for his son. So had apparently that uh, Fruman and Parnas had long-term ties with uh, Trump himself and his lawyer Rudy Giuliani. Last year in Ukraine, um, basically Parnas and Fruman was meeting not only with like three um, prosecutors, they were also meeting Ukrainian oligarchs. One of them went public and claimed that those two guys are basically fraudsters. This is Igor Kolomoisky, who had the meeting with them in uh, Israel. And he said that they basically demanded money uh, and, uh, and, and, and they asked them 
um, to organize the meeting with Zelensky, right? So, so that Giuli Giuliani <coughs> should meet uh, with Zelensky. It was exactly that meeting when, which was skipped. Yes. We're speaking about this meeting in the end of uh, uh, spring for the inauguration, where we first of all, uh, for the first time, heard this story about attempt of Giuliani to approach. Yes, Zelensky. and uh, basically, Kolomoisky was the first. Um, businessman slash oligarch who went walkal on them and he basically claimed that they're fraudsters. And next day, Fruman and Parnas filed two lawsuits against um, against Kolomoisky. One of them is criminal complaint and which is saying that uh, basically Kolomoisky was frightened them. And another one a civil complaint and it's saying that uh, Kolomoisky ruined their business reputation and they demanded a lot of money, even for Kolomoisky. Like, and um, the thing is that Giuliani went publicly and he was basically protecting Fruman and Parnas. So that was exposed and it was everywhere. And the thing is that now we are seeing this indictment where, the, uh, where prosecutors, you, American prosecutors are saying that there was a Russian, there was a foreign individual number one, and he is Russian, and he was giving the money to the company with the name um, Energy Producers, right? And this company was giving the donation to the Republican uh, campaign. Basically, it's illegal action because foreigners cannot donate to the political parties or uh, be involved in any kind in uh, U.S. elections. So it's a legal action and they basically, um, they basically receive those money from foreigners and they use it uh, to buy the influence uh, in White House, basically. Right? They were donating to uh, congressmen, they were donating to political parties, to... Um, I mean, again, to explain that that meeting didn't happen. So later, all further uh, communication with the, uh, you know, Zelensky and Trump and the temp of the Giuliani to, you know, raise the issue of, for instance, Biden and something went in through the other channel because that was the first, the initial channel, as we understand. Uh, but do you have any information or still, I understand that you were doing on a different story, uh, but this connection to uh, Dmitro Firtash, because mm. in this recent publication, it's openly mentioned that they, at some point, represented the interest of Dmitro Firtash in the US. Uh, and by the way, something interesting uh, probably to mention that uh, recently Dmitro Firtash, who was in, there was a still uh, the part of the decision to extradite him to, to the United States, uh, that he started to kind of uh, fuel more information into this conspiracy theory about Biden, shocking, you know, like all of a sudden, uh, we understand that Firtash wants to uh, buy some, uh, you know, influence in the US because he's going to uh, face the trial there. Uh, but, you know, so w w what we can, you know, say about the, this connection? So as I already mentioned that basically Parnas and Fruman had a meeting with Kolomoisky in Israel. And the thing is, uh, Kolomoisky is saying that initially that meeting was supposed to be about liquefied guys, about this company, okay. which were supposed to uh, basically uh, conduct uh, the... Um, the business between uh, US and Ukraine, right? And um, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they will go to Firtash with the same kind of uh, affair, you know what I mean? Um, uh, it's not like exposed, but like we now know that um, Firtash recently hired new lawyer, Victoria Tosin, who used to work with uh, Trump also, with the Trump administration. and. So he hired influence, very influential lawyers who had uh, good connections with White House. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, basically if Parnas and Fruman had the same basically deal uh, or were offering the same deal to Firtash, you know, uh, give us money 
and we will organize this gas business. You know what you, I mean? You, you, you managed to talk to uh, Parnas, yeah? How did yeah. it sound? <laughs> Um, that was not me who was talking with Parnas. Uh, that was my colleague Michael Salah who, who went to Miami uh, a lot of times to uh, meet personally Parnas and uh, to basically to convince him to talk on record and then later uh, like to meet him in Washington. So he had a lot of meetings with Parnas and um, like you know like with any other. Uh, protagonist in the story or with any other basically shady person like we, should, we have to you know double check all the information that we are receiving so like surprisingly Parnas was very cooperative and he gave us a lot of information for example he mentioned that they had a meeting also in Ukraine with the Bakanov and Shafir. Uh, These are the, uh, at that time, I don't know, they were, they are the closest to the President Zelensky exactly. circle. Yes, they're very close to, the, to Zelensky and um, basically they confirmed that, they, they both confirmed that this meeting actually happened and that... I would clarify, that was this meeting in spring when they still wanted to... That was the meeting between first and second round of the elections. So, so when he was not yet uh, elected. He was not yet elected, but it was obviously that he will be the, the, the next president, yes, because the support was huge back then. So <laughs> thanks a lot. And I would also say to our audience, uh, at this stage, at this point, uh, the scandal is there, but a lot of great journalists has already lit, ri written a lot about that, had background, so you can still, if you haven't had a chance earlier, read this uh, this investigation about uh, who are uh, Igor Fruman and Lev Parnas, uh, what they were doing here, what their business, and also follow the news stories which definitely would be updated.